Hello, and you're very welcome to this gameplay playthrough for Time of Legends Destinies. Now, this is a game designed by Michal Golebiowski. Philip Milunski is coming from Lucky Duck Games and Mythic Games. It's coming to Kickstarter 24th September 2019. And this is all filmed with prototype components. But I'm going to talk us through the first scenario that we've been lucky enough to get access to, which is called The Howl. Now, Time of Legends Destinies is a character-driven, story-driven adventure game in which... Each player is going to choose a character. With that character, they're going to get particular stats, and they're going to have a destiny that they're looking to fulfill by exploring a map, interacting with points on there, passing tests, and going onwards, and so forth. Now, these are going to represent our stats. And the first thing you do is you get a setting, and the app, which drives the whole game, is going to tell you what's going on. In this case, it was a Christmas Eve you won't forget for the rest of your life. It was close to midnight when the townsfolk of Centilli heard a blood-curdling, haunting howl that rose above the snow-covered roofs of the parish. Then the wolves came. Dark, red-stained, growling muzzles on pristine white streets. There were screams, shouts, and baby cries all around. Wolves entered the church, spreading terror that struck the simple townsfolk with paralyzing fear. After the wolves were done with the church, they left. Someone saw them running toward the woods to the south, leaving dark tracks in their wake. In the morning, the priest confirmed what all have suspect, suspected. There is a wolf in here, hiding amongst the townsfolk, a beast in human form, a werewolf. Now Centilli only has time until the next full moon before the werewolf howls again. So, we're going to press OK there, and we're going to choose our characters, and we're going to play with two characters today. We're going to choose the herbalist. When you choose a character, you start filling in these stats. Now, in this case, it's intelligence. It's got four, six, and eleven, and we'll see exactly how these work. They're basically going to allow you to pass certain tests in the game. For dexterity, it's four and eight, and then down there for power, it's five and seven. And the other one, as you can see here, is the deserter, and they're going to have slightly different stats. They're only going to have two on there for intelligence. For dexterity, there's three, four, seven, and eleven. And then down there for power, it's four and six. And all the tests are going to be by rolls of dice. And how well you're going to do is be weighted by your stats, which we can improve during the game we're going to see. So we press OK. And then it's going to tell us how to set things up. And this is basically telling us to set up the map with tile six, seven face up, and then surrounded by three, eight, and 11. So we'll just go OK with all of those. And the app will talk you through this whole process. Now, whenever you have an explored tile, and we're obviously going to have to start somewhere, we'll start on this tile. The app is going to tell you there are certain points of interest. In this case, it's telling me to put some in play. There's a blacksmith right there in that building. It's telling me there's an inn to put into play over here. And then it's telling me there's an abandoned house in there. And there's descriptions of all of this. This is a noble but abandoned house with no fire coming out of it and no footprints. The inn, there's a the hushed talks in there. The people aren't very happy. And the blacksmith looks to be a sort of a center of the town. Now, each player places their mini onto tile seven, and that's just going to represent where you are in each of the tiles during the course of the game. Then we'll crack on, and it's the Herbalist day one. And the first thing it always says is refresh a die. These are effort dice. You have two main dice you never lose, three effort dice you can add, and you can add more than one. However, you only get one back each term. Since it's the first term, we've got all of ours. That's okay. Now, what do I want to do? I've got two options. I can move if I want to. When I move, I can move a maximum of two orthogonally adjacent tiles. But if I move onto one that's unexplored, then that is going to stop my movement. Now, whether I move or not, the second thing I can do is interact with a point of interest. And here we've got the abandoned house, the inn, or the blacksmith. In this case, for the herbalist, there's no need to move at the moment. We'll have a look around this centre of town. So I'm going to take it into the inn. Am I sure I want to interact with the inn? Yes, I am. A warm beacon of light in Centilli. The inn is typically packed full of patrons at this time of year, but not this winter. The few people who come here each evening prefer to sit in silence. The innkeeper whines aloud. I need to deal with Patrin, the Romany travelling trader. He was supposed to return with his payment before Christmas. He travels around in a colourfully painted wagon, easy to spot if you see him, reminded that he still owes me four coins. And then it's going to give me a list of things that I can do. Now, I can buy travel rations for one money. Each start with two money, which I've forgotten to do, but there we go, we do each start with one money, with two money rather. And for one money, I can take one of these items. Now, travel rations might be handy, it might help me carry on, so sure, I'll buy those for the herbalist. I simply put on there, it says I have to pay one coin. Here you are. Then I buy a loaf of bread, a fish, and a lump of cheese, and I get item travel rations. So I look through this deck, 
and I take items. You can carry a maximum of five items at any time. They go into these slots underneath here and we see what it does. Now they all have QR codes on them because other people can interact and anything that's got a QR code on, including yourself, you can basically get people that you meet to comment on, again, as we'll see. And this one, if I discard it, I get to refresh all my effort dice. Now again, we'll see how they've gone, but I can spend all three of those in one turn. And again, I'm only gonna get one back at the beginning of each turn. So my travel ration allows me to put a big effort in, but still feel refreshed. So we'll go okay. I've got some travel rations, that's not a bad start. Now there's, I can give four gold back that Patrin owes to the innkeeper, but as we know, I've only got one, so that doesn't make any sense. I can listen to latest gossip or ask the innkeeper about something. So I need to find out exactly what my destiny is. What is it that I'm trying to do? Now we know the wolves are attacking, now that's going to be part of it and probably stopping that is something I've got to do. But for the herbalist, what else has the herbalist got to do? So maybe the innkeeper knows something. So I'll click on that and it's going to ask me to scan my card. And I'll pop it in there and it says, haven't you heard what I told you about the money? I don't need to engage in others' problems until I can solve my own. Maybe the blacksmith will help you. He's always willing to get into trouble. Well, all right. At least that's a hint. I can go across to the blacksmith. And the last option available to me is listen to the latest gossip. And now this is a test. Now it's not costing me anything. I haven't had to finish my thing, so I can't see that's gonna do any harm. Listen to the latest gossip. Whenever I do a test, this one's for intelligence. I'm gonna roll dice, I'm gonna check it according to my stats. Now, I get my two main dice no matter what, and I can choose to add effort to it. Now, there's not a lot else to do in the inn. I'm not gonna be allowed to go to another point of interest on this turn. So I think I may as well add the one effort dice that I'm gonna get back at the beginning of my turn anyway. So for the herbalist, we'll roll that, and that we'll call that a four. They go between one and four, these dice. So that's a four, three, and a two, so that's a nine. Listen to latest gossip. I check up here and I check, when I go to nine, how many markers are there and to the left of it. In this case, it's two, so I've got two successes. I tap those into the app and say confirm. The well at the crossroads is surely haunted. My son heard strange wailing as he walked past it this morning. Okay, so we can't see a well here, but in this fog of war, looking across here, I can see a well, uh, something that looks a bit like a crossroads. So that might be something I wanna go and do. So I can go and chat to the blacksmith next turn or come across and look in the well. I'll decide what it is. So the last thing it says is give back that four, which I can't do, so I simply end my turn. I lose that effort dice, by the way, it goes into the pool. I take my main dice back always, and I say, yes, I'll end my turn. The deserter. So what does the deserter wanna do? Well. Given that I've deserted from somewhere, I think I might want to probably get myself some equipment as the deserter because I feel like I might be in a fight at some point or the other. So blacksmith seems like a sensible thing to do. So instead of moving, I'm gonna tap on the blacksmith. Am I sure? Yeah. The blacksmith workshop is busy throughout the whole winter. The loud clang of the hammer and the roar of the furnace made talking difficult and the blacksmith has to yell to make sure that you hear him at all. With all this werewolf gossip around, people come to me asking to buy silver trinkets for protection. Who knows, maybe they'd even work. They offer good money, but I don't have enough silver. Look around and bring me silver in any form so I can melt it and cast the talismans. Okay, well I haven't got any, but something to keep in mind. I have the option here of buying equipment, possible. I can steal something from the blacksmith using my dexterity, also possible. I can ask the blacksmith about something, ask to forge a silver dagger by using silver from now that's a scan one and I don't have any silver, so that doesn't seem viable. Or donate silver, again, that doesn't seem viable either. So ask the blacksmith about, steal something from them or buy equipment. So cheating here, well not really cheating, just listening in. The herbalist can find out something about their destiny by talking to the blacksmith. So it makes sense that maybe I can as the deserter. And all information's open, whatever either person reads, everyone else gets to hear here. So I'll just scan myself and see what he says to say. Forget all that nonsense about Sir Jahan. He's a knight. How could he be such an evil bastard? Oh, that's language. Nonetheless, to take him down, you'd have to arm yourself. Weapons and tools that would improve their effectiveness, something to stop him or slow down. Look for this type of stuff if you really want to participate in a deadly fight. Okay, so that suggests I'm gonna to have to fight a knight at some point as part of my destiny. So my idea to get weapons sounds like a good idea. Now, there's a virtue system within the game and it's not explicit. We don't track it or anything like that. But when you read the rules, it says that your interactions are going to be affected by how virtuous you've been. In order to make things interesting, I thought maybe the herbalist, she will have herbs and maybe look to heal. So I might go virtuous with her and with the deserter. He's already deserted, so he might be morally shady. I'm going to try to go down the shady route with this guy. So 
Still, something from the blacksmith seems to make sense. Now, that is a dexterity test. Now, a blacksmith is probably going to be a bit tougher than me and probably has a hammer in his hand. So, I'm going to put a bit of effort into this one. I think I'm going to roll two main dice and two effort dice here and see how that goes for me. And it's gone okay, but could have been better. So, three, a two, a one, and a one. I know they're difficult to see. In the actual uh, production copy, these are going to be purple, these effort dice. So, they will be easier to tell apart. These will look more or less the same, I think. But anyway, seven. Come up here, seven. That's two successes for dexterity. We'll see how that goes. You didn't get any get any good occasion. Afraid you might get caught, you walk away. Okay. But he didn't catch me. He didn't beat me up. So that's not the worst <laughs> result ever. But I didn't get anything. So I came here to get weapons. Let's go to buy equipment. And this is the first time we're going to get to set up a trade stack. So it's given me a list of stuff from here. That is an axe, a lockpick, a rope, and a torch. Okay. There we go. Now all this gear has got different effects and as I pick them up, I'll go through them rather than go through every single one. Now that goes in a stack up there and it gives me a particular token to put down. In this case, it is the liony looking one, I think. No, that's the horse. Okay, so that goes where the blacksmith is to say that any player, when they're on that tile can trade and it also goes up here next to this stack to say this is the stack you can trade with. So anyone can now buy things from there. And as soon as I chose buy equipment, I can now trade. I've got two money and I like the look of that axe. So I'm gonna take that axe, it's got a value of two. And I'm gonna spend my two. Where there is anywhere to trade, I can always sell this axe back for its value. They never depreciate or anything like that. And when I have more money, I can come back here and buy more things. That trade stack now is available there for everyone. So, okay. So buy more equipment, no. Ask to forge a silver dagger or donate silver, no. So I'm all done and I will end my turn. So something happens in between our turns. Hear ye, hear ye. Our lead, Sir Johan, not his best friend, is coming to Santilli to hunt the werewolf. With him are his fellow knights and the Bishop of Cannes himself. In just two days, his exquisite brave men will honour our humble town with their presence. Okay. Herbalist, refresh an effort die. And what would you like to do? And that's a whole turn. It's as simple as that. Move or not, interact with an area, and then try and work out what the story is and what you're supposed to do. Now, for the herbalist, she got told about going to the blacksmith will reveal something about her destiny, which could be handy. Also got told about wailing coming from this well. Now, we're looking to help people, wailing from the well, that could be someone in trouble. So I'm going to move across to that tile with the herbalist. And uh, I'm just gonna move that over there. And we'll pop here and say, yeah, I'll explore tile eight with the herbalist. First thing is we flip it over. There's our mini going over there to these crossroads. Yeah, there is a crossroads of the world. That's cool. Two paths meet here on these crossroads. An old road sign informs North, Sir Johan's estate. Okay, good to know for the deserter. West, town of St. Tilly, as we know. And recently someone tied a south arrow with a coloured shawl. Okay, so place that face up. Beside the northern path, you can see a big tree with ropes hanging from it called Hangman's Tree. That's pleasant. And... In the very middle of the crossroads stands a covered stone well with a pulley. We'll pop that there. And we get to put these tiles in. So that's tile four up there. We can see a big house. That must be where the night lives. And down here, that looks like a sort of a camp with caravans. And wasn't your man, the innkeeper, looking for some colored caravans? So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind as well. Right. What do I want to do? Well, I came here to look in the well, so let's have a look in the well. Am I sure? Yes, I am. An old well stands alone by the road. Snow covers its roof and the pulley's chain seems frozen. The well is deep, cold and dark. You can hear strange wails coming from the well as you come closer. Is it the winter wind or something else? Okay, <laughs> a wailing. Uh, it says, come closer and listen, which is an intelligence test. Try to pull the bucket up, which is a strength test. She's not too strong at the moment. Or drop one money into the well for luck. Mm, it's a possibility. Okay, I think I'm just going to listen for now. So we'll come closer and listen. Um, now, I don't know what's in there, so I think I'm going to keep my powder dry and just roll my dice. If I get to a six, I've got two successes, and that might be enough. So there we go. I got to a four. 
That's one success. That's not great. Let's <laughs> see how this goes. The sound is unearthly. Something strange is going on here. Do I try to pull the bucket up or drop a coin in for luck? Okay. Let's stick in character. She wants to help. She's convinced something's going on down there. So we'll try to pull the bucket up now. Not very good here in strength. So I'm going to put some effort into this one and add two effort dice. When I roll those, I get... Oh, it wasn't the best roll ever. Two, two, one, and one. That's a six. It's one short, so I only get one success. Confirm. You're just not strong enough. Something is weighing down the bucket. Gain one experience point. Now, I haven't talked about experience yet. When you gather experience, at any point in your turn, you can spend it to improve your stats. Now, if I want to spend one, I can only improve a stat for 10, 11, and 12. And as we can see in our roll so far, I'm not getting up there very often. But for two XP, I can do a seven to nine, three, four to six, or four, one to three. So a guaranteed success, basically. And I'm going to keep hold of that one experience point for now. The other thing is you can never add a token on top of where you've already got a stat token. Now, some of these are going to give you things. And I actually forgot to do that. This axe, I'm sorry. I should have talked about its effect. I'll talk about it when it gets to the desserts turn, but they can give you boost to your stats. So that hasn't gone great, trying to pull that up. So the last thing is I can drop one coin into the well for luck. Something's weighing down. <laughs> That's wailing that bucket. Hmm. I'll, I'll have a think and see what I want to do with that. So uh, no, I'm not going to throw my last coin in there because it doesn't seem very lucky for me so far. So I'll end that turn. The deserter. So this axe that I should have spoken about before. If I discard it, that says plus two automatic successes and a strength test. Okay. But it's got a permanent thing down here as a stat. It's strength seven. So it means I get to put a token on strength seven, meaning there's a chance for successes whenever I roll more than seven from now on. She uses those effort dice, by the way. Those main dice go back. Right. Um, now, if I already had a stat that was seven on there, that's okay if it's my personal stat. An item can add a second one, and if I get up to seven on power in that case, that's two more successes, but I can't have two stat ones on there. Maybe if they were different colors or something when they produce it, but we'll let them worry about that. I'm not making the game. Okay, I get an effort die back for the deserter, and we'll say okay. There's an abandoned house here, which we might want to go into and see what's in there. We know something's weighing down this well. I'm not sure about that. Or this hangman's tree or explore somewhere else. I think with our axe, since we're tooled up, we haven't got any money or anything, we'll go and have a look at this rich looking house. So this abandoned house, here we go. Are you sure you want to interact? Yes, I do. The solid house seems to have been abandoned recently. There's no smoke coming from the chimney. Win windows are shut and snow just cover the entrance. The door is locked. Now I've got a strength test to open the door, break the door or open the door using, well, I'll try and use this axe to open the door, shall I? It may or may not open that for me. You fail to use it, use this as a makeshift key, okay? Axe, you're not a very good key. <laughs> Break the door. Let's give this a go. Uh, I want to get in here, so I'm going to add one effort die onto here. Oh, it was a good roll. It's two fours. There's only one four in each of those dice. And a two, so that's a ten. So that's three successes. I lose the effort die. Three successes on my... Confirm. The door creaks as you hit it with your shoulder repeatedly. Finally, the wooden frame cracks under the pressure and the door swings open. I should maybe have swung the axe, but apparently I used my shoulder. There we go. One XP for me for doing that. We're inside. We've got some more options. The cold and dark rooms of this house look as if they were only temporarily vacated. Save for the thin layer of dust, every household item seems to be fit for use. The whole building creaks and moans in the cold winter wind. So... I can use my dexterity to search the drawers and coffers, or I can stay indoors for the night. Now, I've bothered to break in, so I think I'm probably going to have a search around. I've only got one effort die left, but sure, I'll use it. I'll search. Dexterity, not amazing, but better than my intelligence. And I rolled three ones. That's not easy to do, is it? <laughs> That's, I lose that effort die. I have zero successes confirmed. It's not a commonest cottage. You study the sturdy and elegant furniture but some, for something interesting. Unfortunately, you find nothing. Whoever lived here must have left with all the valuables or I was just too clumsy to find them. Okay, my last option is to stay indoors for the night. <laughs> sure, why not? You stay inside the cold and dark rooms of the abandoned house. Suddenly, a cold shiver runs down your spine as you hear whispers in the dark. 
You see the silver spectre of a nobleman. He talks to himself, visibly furious. He betrayed me. I showed him the ritual. I discovered the ancient spell to turn a man into a beast and he stabs me in the back with this unholy dagger. The spectre wails. Then after a moment of silence, it turns to you. Its eyes burn with teal fire. You, find my mortal remains below the cliff with the stone circle and give me a proper burial so I can at least meet my maker. I'll keep an eye on you though. Oh great, I I've been haunted. Your turn ends. So I didn't find anything. I used my shoulder instead of the axe I was carrying, which wasn't a key apparently. And now I'm haunted. I don't think that's gone very well for the deserter. Back to day three for the herbalist. One effort died back and okay. So we're over here with the well. Now my strength is not great. There is something in that well. It's possible that thing is bad for me or it's possible that thing is good and might die but I'm just not too likely to get that out with my strength so I think I'm going to search this tree or interact with the tree and see there was ropes there maybe there's a rope that I can drop down the well and do something with or I don't know so let's go on the hangman's tree an ancient tree with long and crooked limbs. Some old thick ropes are dangling from one massive branch, swinging in the wind like dead grey snakes. This tree could probably tell dozens of stories, all horrible. As you approach, you can see a young Romany woman clad in thick furs. It seems like she's scraping the trunk of the tree with a dull knife. So I can talk to the woman with my intelligence, with my dexterity, climb the tree to cut off a rope or look at the tracks in the snow. So sure, I'll talk to the woman first. Um, this doesn't seem like it's very difficult. I'll just use my normal main dice here. I rolled a one and a two. That is zero successes again. Really are killing this. Confirm. She glances at you, scowls and says something in a language you cannot comprehend. Then she goes back to her work. Looks like you won't learn what it is she's doing here today. Wow, this isn't going well. Climb the tree to cut off a rope or look at the tracks in the snow. I did come here for a rope. My dexterity is not great. It's four and eight. I'd have to probably put them all in for that. But seeing as that was the plan, I'm going to climb the tree and put them all in and just, just tie myself out. Oh, I've got the travel ration as well. So I can always refresh them. What do we get? Okay, better. That is a 10. So that gives me as many successes as I could have got, which is two. Confirm. You can't find a rope strong enough to be useful. There might be one higher up the tree, but you can't seem to be able to climb up there. So I was literally unable to get to the rope. It was a waste of my time. I can look at the tracks in the snow. Why not? It's the last thing left to do. I've just got my two main dice left. We'll roll that. A four is one success. Confirm. There are many horse tracks leading north and a lone wagon's tracks leading southwest. Southwest, okay. Another experience point for doing that. So now I can boost up one of these up here, but seven, eights and nines, maybe I think I'm going to be patient when near the beginning of the game and try and build it up to get more down here. Okay. Nothing else to do at the hangman's tree. We're all done. Yes. Back to the deserter who's been haunted, has been told to find a stone circle somewhere. Okay. Now, if I have a look around here at these, I cannot see any stone circles. That's not to say they're not there. The scarecrow up here. There's a bunch of forest down here. There's that camp and there's the rest of the town here. So I don't particularly want to be haunted for too long. So I'm going to start heading across there to the west, which is, is that where he said to go? I think it is. So I'm going to move on to tile six and explore it. There we go. So we'll flip it over and we will move ourselves onto there. Western part of Centilli. Winter has claimed the roofs and streets of the town, covering them with snow. Okay. Looks like I'm putting a priest into a church there. There's the church and there's the priest. We've got towering above the square stands the town hall after the night of the howl. It's got a name, is it? It was temporarily turned into a field hospital for the wounded. Okay, in fact, there's a little red cross on there. So, okay, that's where the hospital is. And then just put these tiles around it. So that looks like a bend in the road and some forest. And this one over here looks like Maybe a stone circle, actually. That might be the place I'm looking for. And this one up top here looks like a whole bunch of not a lot. An old tree, maybe. <laughs> okay. So I'm here. I've got the town hall and I've got the church. Ooh, neither sound great for a deserter, I'd have to say. Probably not going to go to the church. I'm probably going to go to the town hall and see what's going on in there. 
Are you sure you want to interact with the town hall? Yes. Moans and screams of agony greet you in the dark corridors of the town hall. Turned into a lazaretto overnight, it is now a place of blood and death. A dozen of inhabitants wounded by the wolves are howling in pain, while the spared ones are doing what they can to bring them back on their feet or ease their pain. So, for my intelligence, I can use my knowledge to tend the wounded. Not very smart, probably not going to help much. With my dexterity, help with changing wound dressings or potential help in the wounded so you can steal their valuables. Well, that sounds despicable. That's exactly what we're going to do. Great. We're going to pretend we're helping the wounded. Uh, this sounds quite risky, but I'm going to the stone circle. Four, get me one. Let's just give this a go. Okay. Didn't he roll triple ones before? He's just rolled double ones. <laughs> it's not going well for the haunted deserter. Confirm zero. An old man wakes up suddenly with your hand in his pocket. D no, he moans. Thief, leave me be. You hastily leave the town hall before anyone notices you are not a very good thief. You fail in the blacksmith as well. Your turn ends, deserter. You are not doing well. Hear ye, hear ye. As Sir Jahan and his party patrol the lands around Centrally and search for the murderous werewolf and his wolves, the Bishop of Cannes will reside in the town's church. In the meantime, the priest will be serving his parishioners in the field. Okay. Replace the point of interest. Okay, so the priest is coming off and what looks to be the bishop with his mitre and staff is going in there. And then the priest is coming back to the well. Hmm. Okay. And Sir Jehan's hunt has turned up. Something else to make the deserter happy about life. And they go there. Okay, we're back to the herbalist. Refresh a die. What do we want to do? That priest is now at the well. Surely, although I haven't got any better, <laughs> this is my last tarot, I'm going to go for this well and see what's down there. So maybe the priest will help me. Oh, sure, I want to interact. Yeah. An old well stands alone. Yes, I can hear strange wails. Yes, I can. Is it the winter wind or something? So the priest, I can ask the priest about something. The only thing really I have to ask about is myself. But sure, why not? Why don't we? Uh, we might have something insightful to say. They're a priest after all. I have to spread the good word. Do not bother me now. I heard that the huntsman got sick. Go aid him and be useful. Okay, well, I'm a herbalist. Go aid a huntsman. Where would I find a huntsman? Don't know. There's something to think about if I can remember it. Ask the priest why he's so tense has come up. Let's do that, shall we? Since the bishop arrived, I felt a call in to get out of Centilli and investigate, but it has derailed me from my recent project. I wanted to enlighten Romany about the ways of God, but now I'm literally at a crossroads. He is. <laughs> what should I do first? I guess you could help me by visiting the Romani and talking to them about the Holy Scriptures. Here, take this. He hands you a silver crucifix. Okay, gain item 20, silver crucifix. What does this do for me? Silver crucifix. Oh, that's a chalice. That won't be the thing. Silver crucifix even. So it is silver. Blacksmith was after silver. That's a possibility. It's holy in case. So they've got keywords on them. If something says you have a holy item, I could use that. And it gives me a boost to my intelligence. It gives me a nine on intelligence. And that's handy as well. Okay. Thank you, priest. But he wants me to talk to these guys down here. Is that what he said? Okay. I can come closer and listen. I, I don't. It's not going to cost me anything. I'll just use my main dice. Sure, why not? And I got a seven, which is two successes. Do I learn anything new? Was that a bark? There's a dog in the well. Oh, I'm not very strong, though. But I've got to save the dog. So, yeah, that effort dice has got to be put in there. Come on. Good roll. Good roll. Let's see. It's a five. That's only one success. Oh, you're just not strong enough. Right, I've got three experience points here. I'm going to spend them to give myself a four in power. And I'm going to save that dog because you can't leave a dog down the well. That's just not acceptable. So, um, oh, I've got to talk about the Romanian religion. Sure, I'll talk to this priest. He might help me out some more. He just says, please help me by visiting the Romani and talking to them about the Holy Scriptures. And there's dropped the one into the well, which I don't want to do for luck. So I'll end my turn. But at least I've got stronger. Next time we're going to save what I hope is a dog. Although there are wolves, aren't there? Wolves don't bark, though, do they? Maybe they do. Yeah, I'll end my turn. So, deserter. 
get back one effort die. You're going to continue over to the west, whereas you don't think you want to go to the priest and well, your bishop is even even worse now. You didn't have much luck on the town hall, so we'll put this across here and explore this tile. Let's flip this over. Let's read. Rolling hills haunted by the moaning winter wind. Okay. Lost among the hills, there's a circle of tall stones carved with ancient letters and symbols. Let's pop that up there. The cold wind is howling between the cliffs. All you can see is white snow everywhere. There's a space under the cliff we can go and visit, which I think is where the ghost told me to go. I think they said under a cliff. And we get to put this into play. And this into play. Now, I happen to know, because these are the tiles that came with this preview promo copy, that's as big as this map is going to get. So we've got everywhere unveiled, but we're just doing this narrow strip at the moment, but that's fine. So, okay. That goes down there. Yeah, I gathered that. And then I'm going to go under the cliff because I don't want this ghost to haunt me in my dreams and suck my soul out. Yes, I want to interact with the cliff. Walking through the high snow drifts feels like being sucked into a swamp. All we can see around is snow. Okay, follow the spectre's hints to find the body. Sounds like the thing to do. Something strange sticks out from under the snow in a shallow ditch beside your path. As you get closer, you notice it's a human hand, half eaten by some scavengers. Lovely. I can. Investigate the remains. Give the remains a proper Christian burial or cut off the dead man's hand to take the pouch. Don't really want to do that because I've got a ghost haunting me. I think I probably want to bury this and get the ghost. Get rid of it. It's a power test. I've got four, six and seven. This can't be that hard. I'll put one effort dice into it. It's fine. Everything's going to be fine. And it's a seven. That's three successes. Surely three successes. I can bury someone. It takes the whole evening. Breaking through the frozen dirt, you manage to dig a shallow grave. You move the remains there and pray for a moment. Suddenly a strange mist comes from below the grave and soon you see the spectre of a nobleman. Now I can rest in peace, but people that led to my demise shouldn't. There was always a third person, a woman there. Use my lantern among the stones where I was killed to find the mask she wore. The spectre vanishes and an eerie hovering ball of teal light appears a few metres from you. When his, his eyes were teal, weren't they? It's nice. I've got his eyeballs following me. I get a will o' the wisp. Okay. That is in every dexterity test, I may reroll all my effort dice once. Fair enough. And it gives me an 11 in intelligence. That's made me only very slightly less dumb. I'll lose the effort die and bring my main die back. And okay. Remove this point of interest. No going back there. And my turn ends. Okay. That is the end of day four. And it's at that point that I'm going to call a halt to this part of the video. And I'll release more parts uh, throughout the day. And you can follow on the story if you wish to. But hopefully this has given you a good idea of how to play Time of Legends Destinies. And this has come to Kickstarter 24th September 2019. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next part.